Off day everyone, I'm Nestor Licato with the Pacific Daily News. Here are our top stories from the PDN Newsroom. A dispute over alleged millions of dollars in unpaid rent has the landlord of the Sciences Fun and Awesome or CIFA Learning Academy Charter School moving to evict the school from its campus. But school leadership says the next school year will proceed as planned. CIFA officials and attorneys for the school landlord Eagle Land Holdings LLC appeared before Superior Court of Guam Magistrate Judge Jonathan Kwan on Monday for proceedings in the case. CIFA, a middle school which boasts over 400 students and a curriculum focused on science, technology, engineering, art, and math, had its school charter extended for another six years this past March by a unanimous vote of the Guam Academy Charter School Council. But documents filed in the Superior Court of Guam by Eagle Land allege that charter school at one point was in arrears by $4.1 million. Eagle Land is asking the court to evict the school and require it to pay $1.58 million allegedly owed between May 1, 2023 and April 30, 2024. Despite the situation, CIFA Board of Trustees Chairman and an officer in charge, Anthony Sunga, told the Pacific Daily News on Monday that CIFA will definitely be operating in the upcoming school year 2024-2025. In other news, police are asking for help as they investigate a Friday traffic accident that killed a woman on Route 16 in Dededo. Guam Police Department spokeswoman Officer Berlin Sevilla said the woman, a pedestrian, was hit by an SUV at around 8.30 by American Bakery. She has not been identified and next of kin have not been located, Sevilla said. The woman was taken to Guam Regional Medical City where she was pronounced dead at 10.21 p.m. This is Guam's fourth traffic fatality of the year. Highway Patrol Division investigators determined the vehicle was southbound on the inner lane of Route 16 when it struck the woman. The driver fled the scene but turned himself in at the Dedo Precinct Command soon after the crash, Savella said. No arrests have been made and police are asking anyone with information about the pedestrian's identity to contact the Highway Patrol Division at 671-475-8463. And finally, attention foodies. Philippine fast food giant Jollibee will hold the grand opening of its Haganya shopping center location on Thursday, June 27. The Haganya Jollibee is the second on Guam, and the franchise holder, Heavenly Foods Inc., earlier announced plans for a third restaurant here. A brief ceremony will be held to mark Jollibee Haganya shopping center's grand opening at 10 a.m. on June 27. Guam Police Department officers will receive a 25.59% increase in their base salaries very soon as a way to retain personnel who are leaving for higher paying federal law enforcement jobs. According to government officials, the police pay adjustment was discussed during a legislative hearing Monday on GPD's fiscal 2025 budget request. Guam law enforcement pay was last increased by 18% in January 2022. Chief of Police Stephen Ignacio said the new increase was supposed to be effective June 9, but there's been a slight delay as they finalize the necessary documentation and paperwork. This 25.59% is four times more than the 6% they would get if we were to pursue the proposed 2% annually, Ignacio said. He also said it would be an adjustment to officers' base salary and is not differential pay on top of their base salary. In other news, the permanent transfer of Marine troops from Okinawa to Japan will begin as early as December, according to a report from Japan's Kyoto News Service, citing an unnamed Marine official on Sunday. It's the latest development in the long-agreed Japan-U.S. forces realignment plan aimed at reducing the Southern Island Prefecture's base hosting burden, the Kyoto Kyoto report said. In March, Marine Corps Base Camp Blas spokesperson Major Diane Rosenfeld told the PDN that a total of 5,000 Marines and 1,300 dependents are expected to start arriving on Guam, but only a small number will start to relocate in 2024. And finally, the Guam Department of Education has submitted a spending plan of $303 million for fiscal 2025, likely the first ever annual department budget request to crack the $300 million mark. GDOE presented its request to senators during a budget hearing Monday. Education Committee Chairman Senator Chris Barnett asked Education Superintendent Kenneth Swanson to justify the budget request, which is $56 million more than what GDOE requested last year. This past year, a lot of discussion has been made of the decrease in enrollment and the possible consolidation of schools, Barnett told Swanson at the budget hearing. Swanson said GDOE employee expenses have gone up, quote, a great deal. 
Between salary levels and reimbursements for retirements and benefits, those expenses have gone up as well, Swanson said. Most of this can be attributed to the costs that are mandated for compensation. He cited the most recent government-wide pay raise of 22% and the 20% GDOE teacher pay raise in May 2022. For more of these stories, go to guampdn.com and follow us on social media.